2016 uh, book by Victor Lavelle, uh, published on Random House Books. <clears throat> and this is a, I had this book in my Audible queue for years, actually, like for a long time. And finally, I just said, let me just stop bullshitting around and get to listening to this and uh, finishing this out and, uh, you know, do a nice little review on it. And here we are. So, um, what is this book about? So that, well, first off, like Victor Lavelle um, is the author of The Ballad of Black Tom, which is one of my favorite stories uh, currently. Um, it's very, it has that uh, kind of Lovecraftian uh, kind of uh, vibe to it. Uh, and yeah, it's, it was, um, as a as a Lovecraft fan and also knowing uh, like the full history of Lovecraft, it was very refreshing to have uh, not only like a black character in like a Lovecraftian kind of narrative, but also um, like you know, discovering another uh, black author was was like you know who was into that as well and was able to pull that off. And so yeah, that was that was pretty cool. So every so I look out for Victor Lavelle. He's one of my favorite authors, and I've done two. I did Ballad of Black Tom and um, some about space. Some about space. I didn't really vibe that well with but I, I enjoyed it so i enjoy his writing actually uh so uh, yeah with that in mind so let's hop on into this one and as the the, the picture on the thing says uh stream on apple tv when i first started this i had no idea that it was like a tv show coming out with this starring lakeith stanfield of all people uh, in it on apple tv and i by the time I finished this, I was like, wait, because I, I was like uh, looking this up after I finished it when I was like kind of like writing the review and I saw like an Apple TV show and I'm like, wait, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I was like, when, when it came out the blue, I had no, I had no idea this was coming. I didn't see any ads or anything about it, but yeah, so and I'm definitely going to check that out after reading this book and just to see kind of like how they compare. But um, all right, anyway. Without further ado, what's it about? So, uh, Apollo Kagwa uh, has just become a new father and is trying to juggle his career with his new family while also dealing with the trauma of his absent father uh, when he suddenly is struck with an unthinkable tragedy. Um, and so, this book, book's kind of all over the place to be complete. Just I can't I can't even I can't even front. It was all over the place. It was pretty long, longer than I think it probably needed to be. But it's, you know what? Let's let's just go right into this. Uh, so what did I like about it? Um, it's something different. It's something different. It's something very different that I can definitely say that about this. And I'm I'm always in the mood or looking out for like something that's kind of different, kind of weird, kind of odd. So I I. I kind of like that about this um it is a modern fairy tale <clears throat> and um once i kind of i was about halfway through the book when that finally kind of hit me that like okay so because his 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 narrative tone in this kind of uh was very aloof i guess i can say to me anyway Especially like in the beginning, because we're getting all this kind of like backstory into like uh, like uh, Apollo's mom and dad, how they met, and everything. And then like about three chapters in, there's no mention of them. <laughs> there's like no mention of them at all. And so, and I'm just going through this like, wait, what is what, what was all that about then? But but it's because he's trying to like he's trying to write like this fairy tale kind of thing right and so once once that once that uh, kind of like hit once i got that in my head i was just like ah okay okay it, it makes more sense now you know um but, he's, but yeah it was just I, and i think he's trying to be more a little bit more like literary if that makes sense you know he's trying to like flex his uh, kind of like his writer muscle in this too but you know it kind of it I, I'll, I, I'll get to it I guess I'll get to it but um 
Yeah, modern day fairy tale. Um, the one thing it does do, um, it uh, really makes me look at like parenting in the modern age, like the modern day, because um, in this, like Apollo and Emma Kagwa is uh, like Apollo's wife. Um, like they end up having a, a baby, and there, there was this thing that um, I think all of us, all of us parents, and uh, from here on out, probably will end up doing or becoming faced with it's just like we we instinctively take all these pictures of our babies of like new our, our newborns and our toddlers and we take all these pictures and, and we post all of them right up on facebook <laughs> you know, we post all our kids pictures and, and it's without even really considering the level of access we're giving complete strangers to like our kids our homes all of that stuff and it's just hit me like oh yeah yeah that is right that's why why do we do why, why do we do that like yeah i don't want the like leagues of weirdos like ogling my kids like that yeah okay yeah maybe, maybe i should stop that <laughs> you know but um yeah i just, I think a couple of years ago, like, I kind of, like, it kind of hit me, and I was just like, yeah, I don't, I'm not going to post <clears throat> pictures of my kid, like, every day, or, like, every stupid little thing we're doing, you know, up there, like, if it makes sense, I mean, if, if it makes sense, then it makes sense, then, like, okay, yeah, there's a moment, here's a moment we had, we can kind of share that, but, yeah, I don't really do that, I don't really kind of do that, really, but, um, <clears throat> Yeah, um, this that that kind of made me kind of call that into question, um, and this I guess you can call this is kind of like an allegory to like postpartum depression as well, um, like the whole thing that Emma goes through as uh, as far as um, you know the baby and the changeling and it not you know for some reason like Emma like not thinking it's her baby again or something and so me, Apollo and like me was thinking like, oh, she has some kind of like extreme postpartum depression or something that's going on here. And like, even Apollo was like, look, take your medicine. <laughs> you know, you, 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 you're wigging out, you're getting on my damn nerves. So just take your medicine, woman. Like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna hear all this. It's not my baby stuff again. Like, what the hell are you talking about? Take your, med take your pills. Did you take your pills today? Please, let's check all of that. But, um, yeah, uh, as I was saying, that like the uh, Victor Lavelle kind of wrote this in this very kind of aloof, like narrative. Uh, it it goes back way back further than it should. It kind of very meandering. You know, it 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 almost kind of it's it's very kind of like open and empty, kind of like a Stanley Kubrick film. In in my mind, it's it's kind of like written like a Stanley Kubrick film really it's it's very cold and and spacey and airy at times and it's it, it's almost like um Lavelle's pulling back the camera to kind of set up this expansive kind of like wide shot and it's just like we don't need that but I mean it's his art it's his heart artistic vision and so oh I, okay I guess man but yeah, I didn't, it did, I, I don't know, it kind of didn't really need all that, and it added more, more than it needed to be, I'm, I'm guessing his word count, his word count game was, was crazy when he was writing this, but, um, yeah, but I, even that, like, saying all that, it doesn't help it, because it makes it just slow, it, it makes the book slow, and, and it, it kind of makes it a chore, but, it's, okay, I'm still talking about what I like on this, right, I haven't even got to that, right, um, so trolls, uh, trolls. So like this is like Victor Lavelle is making like a modern day fairy tale here, and so with fairy tales, of course there's trolls, and uh, there are trolls, and so uh, the real life trolls that we have in in today all live in a world called Twitter. <laughs> they all live live in a land that we call the Tweet. And so there, there is so like, we have that we have like the the modern day internet trolls, and also he puts like a, a actual kind of fairy tale 
troll in this as well. And that's where uh, like the title of the story, The Changeling, uh, kind of comes into play. And um, that's I really really like that. I really kind of like that. So and so you have like you know both uh, versions of trolls basically like in the story. You know I thought that I thought was pretty ingenious and and that I liked that that was pretty cool. And so um, yeah, so the, yeah, the trolls. Uh, Will, William Wheeler, who I think. And knowing Victor Lavelle is a fan of Lovecraft, like I am, um, William Wheeler is a very uh, familiar name, uh, especially like anyone who's uh, familiar with the Dunwich Horror and all that with, with my boy, old Wilbur Wheatley and, and all that. But yeah, so that's that's what I liked about it. Um, what I didn't like that much about this... Um, yeah, it's just the, his writing style in this. It starts out really slow. Like, we're getting all this crazy backstory <clears throat> to characters that really we, we're not spending any time with, really, in, in the story. And so it just kind of made it seem like, oh, well, that was pointless, kind of. Yeah, it seemed kind of pointless uh, to, to go back to, like, have all these backstories for characters that we're not really we ain't, we ain't spending no time with, right? Um... And it just drags. It drags the book along. It makes the book a chore to finish, honestly. Because um, even then, like, that's the start of the story. And then, like, we're going, we're going. Things are getting interesting. Things are getting interesting. Oh, holy shit. What is happening? This That's crazy. And then we just stop. And we go all the way back to, like, you know, more, more exposition, more narrative, more backstory. And it's just like, ah. Uh, uh, we don't really need this, and it it really feels like filler. While you while you're actively like going through it, it's like oh, it's, I can tell this is just filler. This is just word count filler, you know. It's this ain't needed. But, um, yeah, and it's I don't. It's not. It's, I'm not gonna say it's a knock, but it's, it, this is a story. <laughs> by a New York City author who is from New York City and he loves him some New York City and he's going to let you know he loves him some New York City there's there's so much there's so many like um, I, there's, there's so much New Yorker stuff in here there's so many uh, like street names and sites and places and things and all that and it's just like you know what okay, yeah, okay fine sure it's, it's New York City I got you bro I got you brother but yeah it was just like it's not a knock but it's just a observation you know I thought it was I actually think it's pretty funny like every time he like puts in some kind of New York City idiom or something like that in there I was just like yeah okay Vic I, I got you big I got you big Vic I, I feel you um so and, and I'm saying so this this is a fairy tale. This is uh, like him trying to make kind of making like a modern day fairy tale. So I, so so Emma's a witch basically. So I, I guess that's I, so I got lost. I, I didn't understand what the whole thing with that was about. I guess because uh, so Emma goes to Brazil at, at like early on in the story, and there's this shit. There's this lady uh, like down by a river. That everybody told her don't go to this river, right? And but she goes any damn way because she's a woman. She don't listen. Women don't listen. Anyway, I, I'm, I didn't say that. But anyway, so she goes to a river, and then there's like um, this this uh, old witch like puts a ribbon on her and gives her like three wishes or something like that. And so I guess that did that turn into a witch? I don't know. I, I don't understand. I, I didn't. I didn't get that part. But um, yeah, that. I got lost. I, I didn't understand what what the second half of the book was meant to say about her. Because even in the thing is like she had she had some kind of power or some kind of glow, and then uh, when they uh, Apollo and Emma re reunites at a certain point, and then she loses the glow, and even Apollo is kind of like, well, what what happened to your powers and stuff? Like you were like you had this like kind of glow and she said something to the fact of well I, that was only because I needed it then now that you're here I don't need it now or something like that and it was just like 
Huh? <laughs> I don't. I, it that that it went it went over my head. See the bald spot? You see that bald balding spot right there? It went over it. It, it went down. I I understand it. Uh, yeah, it went way over that. But um. Uh, yeah, there was so there was a lot of background, like I said before about um like characters we don't even really spend that much time with but there were there were like a couple of characters in here that you actually do spend a fair amount of time with but we didn't get any backstory on them like they they just kind of like appeared in the story and and we're, we're with them we're hanging with them we're rolling with them but that was it we don't get any expansive backstory to tell them how what happened with their parents and their parents parents how they got together and all that stuff it's just like uh, Patrice, Patrice and uh, William Wheeler would have been th would have been nice to get some backstory on them because you know we spend a fair amount of time with them, especially Patrice. But uh, it's we don't yeah he just he's just a guy that um, Apollo hangs out with at work, and that's that's all we getting on him. <laughs> yeah, was, I, sure, okay, okay. So finally author's introspection on this uh which is basically just like me giving my final thoughts and uh you know in the view of someone who is an author and uh, crafts narratives and just giving my final score uh so glamour uh, is the spell that is highlighted by this book and it is explained as how the troll fools parents into believing that their newborn hasn't been swapped out with a horrid mangled looking mound of flesh uh, and it's the same uh, convention that Victor Lavelle enchants us with this book. Um, as he breaks uh, the spell of everything, uh, the spell of marriage, uh, the spell of new age parenting, uh, you know, including that urge to post every picture of our babies to social media for some insane reason, uh, <laughs> and even worse to geotag the location of the pictures so that the entire world knows exactly what they look like and where to find them just just yeah they're right here come here <laughs> um, so uh, we're just serving them up uh, to the real life trolls in existence um, you know the, the, the trolls that live on the internet uh, it makes us take a look at the gender roles in parenting uh, and how it's shifted from generations past to where dads have a much more active and involved role uh, in their, chil their children's lives um, and in their upbringing and not just relegated to being the providers uh, <clears throat> there's a great section in the book where there's a part of uh, where there's a, uh, a park where there's mothers with their babies on one end of the park and then the section where the group of fathers are kind of huddled together with uh, doting and bragging over their babies uh, just as lovingly and uh, the book even makes us look more into our own lives and try to break the spell of our own uh, environments uh, much like how Apollo was able to finally recognize what had happened in his own childhood uh, while though parts of the book was needlessly padded and stretched out uh, making the read feel a bit uh, pompous uh, sometimes. Uh, I think Lavelle hit the mark for the most part. This is a modern day fairy tale that gets just as grim. Pun intended. Three out of five. All right, so yeah, there we have it. Uh, the Changeling, the book, not the show, just the book by uh, Victor Lavelle. Three out of five. Uh, enjoyed it for the most part. <laughs>